Hi folks, welcome back to the Horde. So I got up today and I figured I'd start trying to clear the driveway off, get myself a little bit organized for the uh, for the up and coming winter, eh? Because like it or no, winter is coming. So I've been kind of looking around the Horde for where I could get some space, where I can put some things away. So I came in here and there was some scrap wood and I, I had some more scrap wood floating around and I said, wow, if I smash myself together a few shelves, I could clear some of the engines that are floating around kind of in the way. So I was very, very pleased with myself. I, you know, obviously I got the shelves up, right? Use some old pallet wood. You know, that's a 200X engine that was sitting in the driveway. This is probably, I don't know, 200M. It does not have reverse, it's chain drive, it's got high and low. This was a burned up 200ES. You can see it's all kind of melted up here. And this is a um, 200ES that came from Stony. So I'm pretty cool, right? I put some stuff away and and all. I even have spot for one here, maybe one more there. So I'm I'm thinking I'm doing pretty good. So um, then I kind of went into the next level of uh, of depth in the driveway. You know, just started to uncover a few things, and I said, well, let me put the engines that are floating around down here on a cart so I can kind of see what I have. And uh, you know what, guys? I think underneath plastic and tarps and all this stuff is reproducing on me. It's just, it's just becoming more and more and more. So there it is, the pile. And that's not even all of it because I still got more engines floating around and and all so I mean even a little, little diesel right there 10 horse diesel or 8 horse diesel whatever it is and you know engines here God knows how many more are in this pile anyway kind of one pile at a time eh so Here's the next pile of engines. I mean, some of this is, well, relatively new. I don't know if I could call it relatively new. I've had this one over a year. This is a 350X engine. That one I just got from 2124 Redding, along with the torque converter, a couple of fuel tanks. It's hard to get these fuel tanks in good shape, so it was cool that he, uh, he gave those to me. That's a nine horsepower Tecumseh. Um, guess what's wrong with it? Yeah, I'm going to rotate the shaft. Any guesses? <laughs> she threw a rod. I'm not quite sure why she threw a rod. The guy I bought it on a snowblower that had a, a thrown rod. And, um, according to the individual I got it from, um... He indicated that it was running, but it seemed to, and it, he was getting it ready for the winter. So he changed the oil, he got it running. He was just um, moving it from his uh, shed to the driveway where he would store it um, in his garage for the, for the winter, right? You don't want the snowblower out in the shed and have to take a half hour snowblowing your way from the shed to the driveway. You want to just start up the snowblower and get right on the driveway. So anyway, he was moving it from the shed to the driveway and it, he says it seemed to be hot. So he shut it down and double checked everything and he, he said everything seemed fine. He fired it up for a second time and it gave him some trouble firing up, but he used the electric starter. It has um, an electric starter on it. And he says it, it fired up, and um, it just it just seemed to be hot as he was near it, and and he was kind of looking it over, trying to figure out why it was hot, why it wasn't cooling, and it um, threw a rod. It just um, it just you, you know chucked a rod on him, so it was like, uh oh, kind of screwed here. 
This engine, I, I have to be completely honest, I'm not sure what the story on it is. Sorry about the wind. Doesn't seem to have a lot of compression. It does have a plug in it. So it would have to get opened up. This one was the Honda with the gear reduction. And I got to fire it up, and I'm listening to it. And I'm like, "Wow, does that have a um, does that have a rod knock?" So I, you know, brought the throttle up a little bit, and then backed it off. And of course, when it, it wound up a little bit, and when I backed it off, you can hear the rod banging, and it banged about ten times, and then it chucked it. So that's dead. This is um, a Briggs. Appears to be off a generator. It runs. I got it running. Anyway, it's good that I put my hot little hands on these engines and I could see them. My problem is where to put them. Oh look, another one, Monster Kohler. And the problem with that Kohler is it's a little beyond uh, my lifting capability. Here's a Honda in a box. I think it's, what are you? I think you're a 200S, 185 or a 200S. I bought it in pieces. Yeah, I'm not, uh... I keep making shelves and putting stuff on the shelves, and, uh... This stuff seems to be reproducing. Oh, look through here. What do you see? More. That's a pressure washer. This thing, I just got to check on this. I gotta pack that up and get it ready to leave. On the snowblower, either I got to get this thing working for the winter, or I got to pull the engine off of it and retire it. I think this has a nice. I think I hope it has a five horse on it. I don't know. S thirty five. Yeah, I don't know if it's a three and a half or a five, or a three or a five. So you guys could see what I'm doing. I really wish you all good luck with your fall cleanups. Um, oh man, more engines. And this stuff, I really want to get the driveway clear. It's a lot easier to, uh, to clear the driveway, to shovel off the driveway, when I could put the snow over here, right? If this whole horde is clogging up the entire driveway, I can't put the snow over here. I also got to get this stuff out of here. You hate finding this stuff, right, with the uh, with the snowblower. It's, it's kind of hard on the snowblower. This is the time of year also that if you got stuff lurking in the bushes, you really want to kind of find it and put it away. Um, because next, next spring, obviously, all the, uh, all the uh, bushes, grass, all that stuff grows up. And then next time you want to find it, you got to cut your way through that. And if you're using automated cutters, you get into the great discovery of, wang, shoot, I just broke the lawnmower. Calvin, I was, uh, I was thinking of you. You were mentioning putting together a kit for um, a starting kit for getting all these things running. And I thought to myself when you said that, I said, man, I... I built that kit. I wonder where the heck it is. And it turns out there were a couple of crates. This one, and you could see the other one taken apart with the motors in them that I ended up moving up above. Anyway, this was with that 200M motor. I got, you know, a carburetor all ready to go and the ignition all set up to go. So, including a throttle on the carburetor. So anyway, it was good that I found that. A bunch of little things like um, these glass doors from a shower and and the shelves. Um, I should probably just throw away the glass doors before they get broken. But if I don't do that, these kind of things, it doesn't hurt for them to be out back. So i got to put them behind the shed. And that will clean this off. There's a load of blocks right there underneath. I think you guys can see them. They got to get off the driveway. It's just a matter of a bunch of stuff clustered here and it needs to disappear. 
I need to maintain the ability to get to this. This is a bunch of uh, kindling that I cut and piled, pallets I cut up over the years. And um, actually in that trash can is kindling and there's some here too. I need to make it so that I could get to this stuff. That way I can burn it up, get the driveway clear, right? If I need more pallet wood, that's not a problem. I seem to have um, found I guess to some extent I could call it a second-hand lumber yard. There's a place not too far from me. It might, it's not, Duchess Metal Supply is where I buy my metal. I think it might just be called Duchess Supply. And um, they wholesale and retail siding. And if you're familiar with siding, it, um, it comes on longer pallets, much longer pallets. Um, so it, I, I've already taken a bunch of wood out of this. This is kind of the scraps that, that are left. But um, if you're just trying to put up shelving and you need, you know, 24, 48, you know, five, six, seven feet of two by four, I mean, there's some nice 2 by 4 here, right? The only bad thing about it is it takes some additional time. So instead of paying 3 bucks for a 2 by 4 you got to, you know, go get it. And typically, I'm out on errands anyway, so going to get it isn't an additional cost. But you got to bring it home and pull the nails out of it, and you got to got to do it in a wise way. That way you, you don't end up having to take a visit to the emergency room because you, uh, you, you know, cut yourself open and need stitches now. All right, folks, wish me good luck. I'm not quite sure where I'm going to put this latest horde of, of engines. Um, you know, the problem you run into, it's very, very simple to say, well, I just got to put them away. And, uh, you know, you line them up right along here. It's a, They're away, right? They're out of the weather. But now you can't walk. And one of the games I'm trying to play or one of the things I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make it so that I can get in and out of here, through here, move things in and out of here without, without having to fight so hard. So these really need to get up and go up on shelves. Yeah, got a flat tire there, too going to make that hard to pull. All right, folks, I want to thank you all for watching and commenting and subscribing. hope you guys are doing better with your fall cleanups than I am. Remember to keep your feet down, keep your head up, and please, please get out there and enjoy all your days. Bye now, folks.